gonna have so much fun hitting this. So obviously from the gamer that you play currently, yep. maybe just to start with a simple question, how, how could it be better or different in any uh, way? So what I've, what I've really tried to work on with that driver is eliminating the right side. If I was gonna draw a center line, I want everything to stay center line left. I'm trying to just avoid like the snappy. Okay. Um, so for, for mine, I've got a lot more weight positioned out towards the toe towards the toe um, yeah and I think that's just sort of how I've built pretty much my entire set so you've wanted your miss to be more of like a block yep if I if I can kind of push keep it, yeah kind of okay. blocky in in that direction okay uh, it's it to me if I if I see anything going snappy right like that's just always and sometimes it's me versus the golf club but for the most part, yeah, if, if I'm if I'm gonna miss, I want everything staying left to center line. Gotcha. So really anti-right yep. probably sets you up to, to be a lot more confident going into that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it's even even like the weighting of the head, I can kind of I can kind of feel it where it just feels a little bit more kind of toe side. And it just feels You me, like feeling that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just just I don't know, it's more of a kind of a confidence thing. I think I've felt it for long enough where you start to just get used to that feel. I got you. Yep. Okay. Good. Those are all those are all good observations that you've made. So is that the more common miss that you would see? Yeah, that, just kind of kind of veering more. I mean, it's sometimes sometimes it's more of a severe kind of snap. Okay. Um, and a lot of that's just like sometimes the transition gets quick from the top. Mm -hmm. And it just leads it leads to just smothering it. But yeah, I mean that's not too terrible. If I see that, it's okay. Okay. It's just it's just more the ones that really start going heavy. The ones that maybe start even straighter and then, then turn, turn right. Yep. Gotcha. Yep. Okay, that's a good one to look at. <laughs> yeah. Let's let's say that one was a, a bit of a directional miss left, but that one's more livable. Yeah. In your mind? Yep. Then the right yeah. one? Yeah, because I, I can still kind of straighten it out a bit more to go right. And then but. what about contact? Did that one feel solid? Uh, no, it was, it, was still, it was still a bit lower on the face. Okay. Pretty solid on that one, yeah? Yeah, yeah, that was solid. That was good. Yeah, just kind of, like I said, everything just sort of left. I've just, I think I just set up to play it like that. And it does look just from what I'm gathering on those swings, it does look like naturally your swing is going left. Yep. And then the ones that are hooking or diving more to the right, yep. that's just a product of your body going left and mm -hmm. then the face getting shut. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's not, it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just a thing. Yeah. So I think if we maybe give you something that's a little bit heavier, maybe something that makes you feel like it's helping you hold off. Yes. That would yeah. probably help you mitigate the right. Yep, I, right? I would agree. And yep. then I would also imagine you might be probably better off playing a little bit more loft mm. just to help, like, allow you to cover it yep. and not feel like you're going to get really swoopy and more to the right. I'm, I'm all for trying, I mean, it's, trying different things here. I mean, for me, it's always been, you know, loft loft for me has never been a, been a been a problem but i don't think i've ever really tried going up Let's in loft see. at least not what's your gamer loft right now nine nine okay yeah see it's almost as if you're two up on the ball oh yeah right well, so I if could. you're <laughs> if you're yeah, like yeah, yeah yeah i could yeah i could definitely get up on the ball yeah so there's a couple of things we can do with the club to okay. almost steepen you out a bit yeah. I, I would still say it's a little bit more efficient to be slightly up on the ball, especially with driver, mm. right? Yeah, yeah. But if you're doing it in excess where maybe the length of the club is, is not helping you, right. maybe going a little bit shorter would actually yeah. help steepen you out a bit. Okay. So those are little things that we can look at once we start diving into what head model sure. and loft we like. But right now you're looking at an average of 156 ball speed. Right. Almost 10 launch, 2800 spin. It's not a terrible combination, but it could be better. It's not oh, quite it's, as optimized, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, I would probably say you're, you're spinning it a little too much because of the strike location. Yeah. It's a little low on the club face. Yeah. So it's affecting overall distance. So I'm going to keep these two. 252 carry, 272 total distance. 
at your club head speed, my eye starts to go towards this. We're not as yeah. efficient as we should be. Right. I would almost want to solve this first. Okay. And then just watch launch and spin become better, like a domino effect. I think if you affect that first, yeah. everything else will start to get better with it. Yeah. That's usually a good starting place. Okay. I like the way that you're thinking here because it's it kind of goes away from the way that I've typically tested drivers, which is get same shaft, get get a similar head. Let's sort of work work through the the issues there. I like where you're starting with with Smash Factor and trying to kind of it's solve some of these other areas to to solve some of the problems so that are more common ones. That I think it's uh, like if it, if you hyper focus on efficiency so getting that smash factor to go up mm -hmm. that to me would entail that you're going to find center a little bit more frequently yeah so if we can get there first yep i imagine launch and spin is going to start to become a lot more consistent for sure and then that helps us dive into what loft and model makes the most sense i love it so let's go so this is uh this is what we're looking at right here okay obviously we have our flagship gt2 GT3. Just as like a, you know, 30,000 foot look at both. Like yeah. What's, what are the, what are the like big differences that golfers are going to see when they're, when they're, you know, getting a chance to see GT2, GT3 well, next to each other? So if we're comparing it against TSR, TSR was obviously a home run for us. Right. Right. So we really tried to keep a lot of the the good characteristics that we were seeing from TSR, total driver performance, giving players good launch, giving players good spin. Right. Now, we kind of hyper-focused on how can we maybe re-innovate this and, and help improve aerodynamics, help improve mm. club head speed. To do that, we, we started to introduce the idea of a split mass construction, right? So this is where we introduced, in order for us to do that split mass construction, we had to, uh, to introduce a proprietary matrix polymer, which is on the crown here. Okay. So it's it's really, really cool. If you were to imagine that split mass, it's right about here, but because of that new formula that we have for that, that, that matrix polymer, mm -hmm. it covers it, so you can't really see it there. So it's been really, really good for us to have this different lighter weight material and not you know, give up on the classic Titleist feel, the classic Titleist sound, yeah. things like that. Yeah. So it's still, you're gonna have that flat weight cap on the back of the two. The three model still gives us the adjustability on that right. weight track system. Yeah. But you'll notice we used I'll to say, have it in the back. Yeah, I was gonna say it's gone way forward. Now it's a lot more forward. So the feel is a little bit softer in my opinion. I mm -hmm. think it's also subjective to how you feel yep. weight which is kind of the, the glory of having different tools to, to feed yeah. to people. Yeah. Um, and then we also closed those windows, so that helped with aerodynamics as well. Okay. So we've seen an uptick in, in speed. Um, and then the four model, you still have that dual weight system. Yep. It's been really, really fun to play around and see what happens if we push the weight way forward, what happens if we have the heavier weight in the back to yep. almost make it play like a two and a half, right. which has been pretty fun. That four is an interesting one because I think for since Titleist introduced the four, everybody always thought that it was the the pro driver. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, I've been shocked by how many guys have been switching into the two. Which I mean, for the most part, everybody always would look at the two and say, "Well, the two's the the two's the one for the the average golfer. You're right. The three's the one for the for the pros." But did y'all flip the script there? Absolutely. It's not. It's just another driver that we offer. Yeah. It's another tool in our in our toolbox. Yep. You know, everybody's different. Everybody requires something different. So we're gonna go. I'm actually gonna just try and go as far as I can. I'm gonna zoom in with this camera and yep. really hyper focus on what I think is gonna be best, and then we'll we'll learn from it and start to chisel away if we need to. So how often are you, like you are with me, for? starting? with smash and kind of working um, your way back that way is, is it is it more player dependent or is it just how you i think how it, you fit it's certainly player dependent however i've always found it makes for i guess a more efficient or a quicker way to to get to a successful combination okay if you hyper focus on helping the player find the center of the club face yeah and then everything else seems to just fall in line you start achieving great launch great spin right 
those two things tend to change depending yeah. on the goal of the player. Uh, but for the most part, players are really looking to hit this thing as far as they can and yeah. as straight as they can. Yeah. And I think it's hard to do that if you can't find the center. Yeah. So, all right, Agreed. let's start here. Let's, uh, let's hit a few. I'm gonna ask you uh, for your feedback on feel mostly. Yeah. Uh, but after you hit a few, we'll talk about what I did. Here you go. Toss this out to you. I mean, first thing for me when I look at it, I mean, this is the first time I've actually seen a lefty. I like the, I like the rounder profile. But, you know, the one thing that I like that from talking to guys out on tour is it doesn't look all that different from, from the TSR product at address. It's, it's subtle changes but it's not, it's not the wholesale stuff that you might see sometimes yep. from other OEMs when they're going from one product to the next, mm -hmm. you know, year over year. It's, it's, it's very consistent in the look. I know you, you saw me build up the, the GT2 model for you, yep. but in a lot of my fittings prior, there's been a lot of people that didn't know I handed them the two and mm -hmm. they thought it was the three. Okay. So there's been a lot of that where, you know, the two models look a lot closer to each other now. Yep. I actually like seeing more of the face, which is something that I don't really know if I've if I've noticed before. There's also that uh, that new design of the face graphics, right? Just how it frames to the ball. That's been really we've gotten a lot of really good feedback on how it sits, you know, as you're statically setting up to the golf ball. Right. Okay. First question: How'd that feel? I mean, it actually felt, even though I felt it go just, you know, I'm seeing it go a little bit right, it felt really good. It didn't feel, it didn't feel like, sometimes when I hit that one, it's like the gear effect takes over and I can just feel it off the face. I'm like, oh man, I, I just kind of smothered that. It right. felt like it was trying to hang its line a little bit, but just kind of turned over just, just a touch. It's, that's, I mean, I, I don't hate that. That's a good observation because I was about to ask you or, or tell you, when you have a, a historic right miss right. that's diving and, yep. and low spinning and, and hooking. Yeah. The only way that you can really start to mitigate that and, and help it and make it better is by increasing spin and make that flight higher. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't dive as quickly yep. in that direction. So yep. that one's really good to see that it's already a lot higher than before. Yeah. Here yeah. you go. Let's get a couple more. Okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All good. I'll delete those. Excellent. And I might even say that you slightly missed that. Oh, I, I definitely, it was, it, it felt low on the face, but you know, again, I, I just, with that first ball and with that one, it just let me, feels let like me, it's kind let of me show you. Let me show you this real quick. Yeah. This will be really, really cool for you to see. So the first one out of the gates, I love that it's already five miles an hour faster yep. than where we were before and same club head speed. Okay. Why would that be? Efficiencies. Efficiency yeah. is exactly yeah. where we wanted yep. it. Second, let's look at this shot, which I think you and I would agree was a miss yep. because you hit it low on the face and heel side. Yep. Look at the difference in spin. That spun at 2,600 RPMs, yeah. which is still pretty good. That's why right, you're still yeah. al allowing That's... yourself to maintain your, yeah. your total distance. Where you were before, it was at 3,000. Yeah, so we were, I mean, this is, this is, and that's where I want to be. I mean, if I can keep it in the, you know, 2350 to, you know, 2700 range mm -hmm. on a consistent basis, I'm, I'm happy because that's a really playable spin rate and I'm I, not getting too close to the edge of 2000 spin. Right. I think if we looked at it in terms of your right miss, your hook miss, yep. we would want and hope that your spin is above 2000 yep. because then it's not going to have that screaming, diving look yep. to it. Yep. And if you happen to miss shots a little bit more to the left, which we understand is more of a livable miss, right. we would hope that that spin is below 3,000 to at least keep a lot of that, that distance that you know mm. you can get out of this, yeah, right? for sure. So it's like we want to live in that world of 2,000s, yeah. I think would be really, really good. Oh, yeah. I don't, I don't want anything. I mean, anything like 28, 29 is, is kind of creeping up there. But, right. Um, yeah. I mean, if, look, if I could do, do 2,400 spin on average, I'm... I'm really happy. <laughs> yeah, that's. I mean, we're, that'd be us literally going more towards what's textbook mm. optimization yeah. of yeah. a driver. We're gonna go now to the GT3, and I'm gonna keep everything neutral okay. for now. I don't really want to mess with that yet. 
So the the benefit and and one of the reasons why I wanted to immediately give you more loft mm -hmm. was it allows me to loft this club down. Okay. Which generally starts to open the club face. Right. Which I think is going to be very beneficial for you to to already be looking down at something that's more open. Yeah. And now this is the GT3 with that CG pushed a little bit more forward. Okay. We'll see how it feels. Yeah, as I say the the weighting of this, I can already feel it's it feels a little bit heavier. Uh-huh. But it's I mean I can feel a little bit more weight kind of towards the forward. Good. Side I don't of yeah, the club. I I was going to say I don't think you're afraid of feeling something a little heavier at the no, bottom, right? Nope, nope. Yeah. It's it, it's a familiar feel to me. Good. I mean, I I missed that and it still felt it still felt solid coming off the face. 2400 spin. Yeah. Again. Yep, yep. On a low heel type of a strike. Yep. So that's now getting you closer to having your we'll call it bad shot. Right. Closer to a good shot. Yeah. I mean, if I'm going to be having a, a quote unquote miss, I mean, I wanted to just kind of hang on that line. That's that's pretty much perfect for me. Absolutely. I would say, and I would call this your natural draw swing. Yeah. Because everything in your swing is going left, which right. would promote more of that draw. Yep. But that's now a draw starting left. Yeah. And then drawing to the target. Yep. Rather than the one that starts at the target and draws yeah. to the right. Yep. And again, I don't mind seeing a draw shape. Mm -hmm. It's just so long as it stays left to center line and kind of works its way back to the middle. Right. How does this, uh, how does the feel compare to the GT2? I mean, like this, this feels a lot. This feels a lot better. It, it think, does feel I a lot better? Just, and it, I've noticed it just in the first two, just with my transition. Uh -huh. it, I can feel it more at the top. And I think that's just promoting just the more confident and controlled okay. transition back through. So now let's let's assume this is maybe the head we're gonna do a little bit of a deeper dive into. Okay. Let me go and reconfigure this. I'm gonna change the weight. I'm gonna change the shaft as well. Okay. Did, how did the shaft feel, by the way? Good. I it, mean, I it's it wasn't one of those where it it you know it felt. Like I was getting, you know, it was too boardy or didn't necessarily it, feel stellar, but it was a a yeah, playable feel. Yeah, for okay, sure. Okay, cool. I'm not saying we're married to this yet, but I'm just going to keep things more yep. similar in this trial. Okay. We're going to change this weight out, give you a little bit more that you can feel. It's always cool when you, you're changing these weights out, making things heavier or lighter. Yeah. It's very subjective. Weight is very subjective to the player. Just where you like to feel it, how much you like to feel. Right. You know, is the heavier allowing me to slow down? Is it is it helping me not turn over the club head as much? Right. It doesn't really do the same thing for every person. Now I'm gonna put this weight more out on the toe because you said something pretty important, which was you like feeling weight out mm. on the toe. And yep. it almost instills a little bit more confidence, more confident. right? Let's do it. All right. I'm going to give you what you're what you're asking for. And well, I was going to say, let's, you're, let's you're, test it. You give right? me what I'm asking for. Let's see if I can actually. You only uh, get to keep what you're asking for if it works. <laughs> yeah. So I'd say. If you can, yep. uh, give me your, your, your good, honest feedback on just the overall feel with the weight, uh, both in the shaft and the head. Yeah, uh, head feels a lot, a lot more similar, even more so than, than the initial weight setup. OK. Yeah, I mean, I could feel a little bit more out towards the toe. Shaft wise. I mean, it feels pretty good to me. You know, the one thing that I always, that makes mine a little bit different is I've got a little bit of a, I've got a mid-size grip on mine. Okay. So, you know, the, the feel is never, I feel like it's never going to be exactly where it is, but definitely head-wise, I feel like we're, it's, we're like closer to apples to apples. So that, that head would, uh, if you had a mid-size grip, this head might actually start to feel heavier because it's uh, right. it's a standard size grip, yep, yep. which you may like, but it yeah. would be like a, a double-edged sword where you like that heavier weight, but you're less comfortable with the grip. Right, yep. How'd that feel? Really good. That even sounded different. Yeah, I mean, I felt like it was a little bit more centered on the face. Yep. So I'm only going to point this out to you just as an observation, I'm not going to really tell you how to change it or anything. Yeah, I'm just yeah. going to make you conscious of it. Yep. When you take the club back, everything starts to close. Okay. Club face starts to close as you're taking it back. Okay. And that could be affecting you 
how the club head gets re-delivered. Right. Right. Dynamically, you're maybe delivering it with a slightly more closed face. Okay. Um, that's just what I saw from yeah. that down the line view. However, if we're looking at that strike, it's one of your fastest ball speeds. Right. 2,400 spin. So that's been something that we've really, really noticed and have been really, really liking about this, this new GT lineup is how consistent the spin has been. Right. Whether I've seen you miss it a little low heel, your spin mm. is 2,600. Yep. On a really good straight shot, your spin is either 2,300 or 2,400. So you're, you're between 23 and 2,600 regardless of where you hit it on yeah. the club face. So that's, and that, I mean, that to me, I think speaks to the, the tech in this club because from talking to the guys when I was at a memorial, you know, they don't necessarily, I mean, sure, more ball speed out of the center is, is a great thing. Yep. But what they're looking for is tighter spin deltas on those misses. Yep. So if I'm missing it heel or I'm missing it toe and I'm still hanging in this range regardless, I mean, typically, I mean, we, we hit it off the robot. And so we know what an incremental change typically does right. when you miss it. I mean, spin jumps, launch changes, I mean, a lot of characteristics, the deltas get bigger, so even with a small a, miss. Then you throw a human being in that mix. Yeah, up exactly. And, yeah, things so, change. Yeah, so now, now, now I'm starting to see tighter deltas across the whole face. Absolutely. Um, your overall take on the weight, is it preferred? I like it. You I mean, like I, it? I like that weight. For, for what it's worth, you did swing that, your fa that was your fastest club head speed. Yeah. And it was with a, quote unquote, heavier hammer. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. Not mad at that. So now, because we were briefly talking about that that shaft change, I think we're both mm. feeling pretty good about this driver. Yes. The head, yep. the the loft, the model, which notably, after giving you more loft, mm -hmm. your spin has come down and it's now a lot yeah. more optimal. Yeah, and I don't think I would have ever <laughs> considered going to a, to a higher loft. You went head. from, I mean, a, a lower lofted head was spinning at 3,000. Right. I increased your loft and now you're at that average of 2,400. And a lot of that has to do with strike location. Okay. I would say that dictates spin a little bit more so when you're really hyper focusing on how to how to navigate through getting you to an optimal spin. Yeah. I'm gonna try something a little different here. Okay. Slightly different, but I'm not gonna tell you what I'm doing yet. I think I cheated, so I'm just gonna pretend like I didn't see Oh, that. that's okay. <laughs> Maybe you saw something that I wanted you to see. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. You yeah. Know, who knows? Yeah, yeah. Here you go. All right. Good miss. I wish I wouldn't have cheated because I already knew it and I started I started setting up a little bit differently because I knew that I felt already felt a bit more confident over the ball. Uh-huh. Do me a favor on just this one. Yeah. Stand a little farther away from the ball. Sure. This is more just my curiosity. I yeah. want to see what happens. It's like here? Yeah, that looks good. Okay. Does that weight still feel okay? Yep. Good. So I know that one was a bit of a push. Yep. But that one's really interesting to me because it was one of your fastest ball speeds. Yep. It was obviously one of your higher shots that we've seen you hit. Right. Your longest carry distance and yep. your longest total distance. Okay. So that's 159 ball speed. So that's now still four to five miles an hour faster than where we started. Right. 265 in the air, your average was 250 in the air yeah. before. Not because of you not being able to carry it that far, you just weren't hitting the ball high enough. High enough. And it yeah. was it was low and it had too much spin, so it was more of that rising yep. type of a flight. So now that was 11 launch, still 2600 spin on a pretty low strike. strike. Yeah. So there's our spin consistency that we've still been seeing. Yep. 265, almost 266 in the air, 287 total distance. Okay. And I might even say you still haven't quite caught one yet. Oh, I definitely haven't. Right? Like it hasn't yeah. been yeah. absolutely pure. You've hit yeah. a lot of really good strikes. Right. And we're already hitting the ball farther. Right. And it's not as much to the right. Yep. Yep. Okay. Let's give another one. I just wanted to okay. show you that. Yeah. Yeah. I would be curious too, in this combination, if it makes you feel more confident to be to be able to become more aggressive, I think so. I mean, it feels the shaft feels shorter than me. It uh, is, which yep. to me is. I mean, I've always toyed around with the idea of going. I, I play it like kind of 45, 45 and a quarter. Okay. But I've always toyed around with the idea of maybe going just a touch shorter to shorter. see if it would 
if it would you know kind of help me barrel up a bit more on on some of those i think if you if we if we do go shorter which we did yep we just want to try to make make sure that we either gain efficiency yep and if we can help get rid of how up on the ball you can become uh -huh. you're not there every time yeah but it yeah. does creep in from time to time yeah You're going to want to come back here and see this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Remember what your ball speed was when it was right. yeah, I mean, that still was, pretty fast? Yeah, it was 159. Yeah. Right. That shot up to 163. Yeah. Would you say that that had the right it's, hooking characteristic that you, that you had seen with your, your gamer? It's, it's kind of moving that direction, but again, I think it's, and I don't know if it's just with the additional loft on this head, but it just feels like the ball is hanging. I know. See your spin? Yeah, and it's, and it's Remember right, we it's right there on the razor's edge. But it's but, still, that's the one where if your spin rate gets below that, it's, yeah. it doesn't get that height and it dives a lot yeah. quicker. And that's not, the, like normally for me, if I'm seeing that, I would instinctively say that's going to knuckle mm -hmm. and just die. Right, that still had control. And that's still, yeah. Because we, we yeah. maintained our window right. that we wanted to If be I in. could get 2,000 spin on a shot like that and yep. keep it in the air, I mean, that's that's a total game changer for me because that starts to eliminate a lot of those really heavy balls that are diving to the right with no spin. So this is going to be pretty interesting. I'm going to keep your best struck shot from where we started. Okay. And then I'll look at the average of these two. Right. It's pretty similar club head speed. We did see mm. a little uptick, maybe, you know, and that's with a shorter shaft though, too. I know, but right? I feel like in mentally, when I'm standing over it, I feel more comfortable with the shorter build mm. that it almost makes me feel like I can go after it a bit more. Like I've, I've tried to get to the point where, it, where I find a cruising speed and I just try and stay there because anytime I try and go too hard, that's where it's either heavy heavy hard right yep. or i'm you know topping one it gets more sporadic yep yep yeah. so i want to keep that out of the out of the equation but I again can, you know i can swing it a little bit harder because i feel more confident with it so this is uh this is pretty remarkable look at the yeah. and again shorter shaft it could be you swinging more confidently which mm -hmm. is the uptick in speed yep. but we've also seen a pretty big uptick in just the aerodynamic shape of right. both of these all three of these models um, just flying through the air faster, yes. which has been creating more ball speed. So it's faster through the air, faster off the face. Yep. So if you look at ball speed gain, you're almost at six miles an hour. Right. With a very similar type of a club head speed. Yep. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm not. There's like you said. It's there's not a lot of there's not a lot of you know the I deltas think, are pretty tight. And I think that attributes a lot to the efficiency. Man, yeah. Right. Efficiency is way up. So back to where we started. That's why I thought it was going to be a really good starting place to hyper focus on making you more efficient. And I just knew, in my heart of hearts, that your launch and spin would have become a lot more optimal how yep. they work together. Yep. So now your ball speeds up, your launch is up your spin is more optimal it's down mm -hmm. from where it was at that 3000 267 in the air 292 total distance this yeah. is how far you should have been hitting the ball well yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when you see it out on tour quick. and you hear the guys talk about it and you're like all right well this is a tour pro <laughs> of course he's of course he's going to see uh, you know incremental improvements like this but yep for for me who you know I miss it all over the face I mean, I need I need this kind of kind of spin retention. I need mm. to be able to have it for whether I'm missing it heel or toe, because I don't know which way you know I don't know which way it's going off of at impact. So I need right. the golf club to help me figure out like let's keep you in that 2,000 range so exactly. it stays playable and you're not having to reload off the tee. So just to be thorough, this is just going to be a quick last little test. Yeah, because I feel like we have found a driver combination that's going in the keeper pile for sure oh yeah so yep. now i'm going to apply basically everything that we did in the gt3 okay into the gt2 11 degree okay same hosel setting yeah uh, i'm making the head heavier just like i did here yep it's just a, an apples and apples comparison okay i wanted you to just go back to it because yeah, you only hit it sure. at the beginning yep so this will be cool to go back to it and either confirm or discover something new and see that was low on the face, but but great looking. I ball mean, it's, it's yeah, it's 
it's it's right on a string. Yep. See, that's 2600 spin as well. Yep. Your spin has been, it just doesn't move. Yeah. It's been about as consistent as we ever hoped for. Yeah. I would tell you this, there you did lose speed on that though. Yeah, and I could, I could kind of feel it just based on just based on the strike location. Yep. So hit that last one. Okay. Um, also the feel of this one, I know you're trying to kind of get it to, to where that three was, uh -huh. but this one just feels a little bit lighter in the head. And the weight is not out weight, on the toe. The weight, yes, right? weighting so, not out on the toe. It doesn't feel like it's, it's as far forward as it is with the three. Yep, all good. We knew we, we hit a home run with that, the, yep. the three model. This was just a last little test. And see if that's gonna be the new miss. I mean, I'll take that all day if, if, that's, if that's gonna be my miss. I'm just so impressed by the spin rates. It's you been, know, it's just, they've been really tight and I'm not, I, you know, I showed up here today. It's not like I've been hitting a whole bunch of balls leading up to, right. you know, I went, I went and knocked the rust off to make sure that I wasn't showing up <laughs> cold turkey, but you know, spins have been, spins have been really good. And I could tell from that one, it's like, I launched that ball into the stratosphere. So yeah. I was expecting that the spin was gonna, was gonna go up.